So it's the morning after the Canadian 2019 federal election, and there's a lot to talk about in breakdown. Before I do that, I want to let you know that I made a prediction video before the election. Go check that out because I'm going to be referencing that a lot in this video uh, to see where I went wrong, where I was right, where I was sort of in the middle, because I think that's kind of helpful to see what ended up happening relative to our expectations. So on the whole, I was right about a minority government. The Liberals won a minority, which is what I projected, and I also projected that the Conservatives would beat them in a popular vote in the process. Where I was wrong, however, was that the Liberal Party ended up getting more seats than I expected, that their minority was stronger. I thought the Conservatives would only be a few seats behind the Liberals, and they were you know, more than a couple dozen seats behind the Liberals, indicating that the vote distribution issues we had with the Conservatives were even worse than we thought. They ran up huge margins in many rural ridings. They ran up huge margins in Saskatchewan and Alberta, but that doesn't help you win close seats in places like Ontario, and that's why they lost this election by a much wider margin than their vote totals indicate. In terms of the balance of power, one thing I suggested people look at was the NDP plus liberal numbers. And if that equaled more than 170, that could be a sign of a stable governing coalition. Now, where I was wrong was that I overestimated the NDP support by a little bit. Um, the NDP, for whatever reason, didn't get those last couple voting percents that were needed to flip some close ridings. And that's why they ended up in the mid-20s rather than the mid-30s in terms of seats. Now, in terms of the effective balance of power, it's the same. They plus the Liberals can equal more than 170, but it does leave the Liberals with a few more seats, which makes them more stable in a minority position, which is less than ideal, of course. The Bloc had a good night as well. I projected them between 35 and 40. They were a little bit lower than that in the low 30s, but for the most part, I was right on with the Bloc. The Bloc will play a big role in this parliament, but they've made no indication that they want to hold the balance of power in a direct sense. But like the NDP, they plus the Liberals could equal more than 170, so the Liberals could have a partnership with them on an issue-by-issue -issue basis to get things done. The fear of a conservative bloc alliance, which I never really thought was possible, um, is not really feasible right now because if you look at the bloc plus conservative numbers, they add up to less than the liberals do. So even if they were to form an alliance, they wouldn't beat the liberals uh, together. And that's leaving out the fact that they're still the Greens and the NDP. And on the Greens, uh, the Greens uh, got three seats, which was one more than I predicted, but it was in a weird way. The Greens got the two I thought they would get out West, which was Elizabeth May seat and Manley seat. Those were the two they held going into the election. But I thought that if they were going to pick up a third seat, it was going to be in the Southern BC coastal area. That's where the projections were showing. But they scored a surprise victory in Fredericton, New Brunswick, which is really rather interesting. And that's probably the biggest individual surprise of the night was the Greens winning that seat. Some people suggested they had an outside shot in Fredericton or Charlottetown, but, but no one really predicted it as, as something to, to look for. And she ended up doing it, the candidate there, uh, and by quite a healthy margin. So, you know, it, it, was a, it was a big win for the Greens in that sense. Other than that, though, it was a disappointing night. Their vote totals sort of sank down from where they were polling, and they weren't able to gain in and around the core uh, British Columbia uh, area of strength they have. And good news, and I'm happy to be wrong on this one, guys, Maxime Bernier went down, and it wasn't all that close. I projected that Maxime Bernier would just eke out his riding, just by a couple hundred votes, but he ended up losing quite handily to a conservative, and it shows that Maxime Bernier's People's Party likely has very limited appeal. I don't know if this is the formal death of the People's Party, but you have to feel they're on life support. From my perspective, this could well be the end of the PPC, and Canada is better for that happening. And finally, we looked at the two independents, and here I was right on both counts. Jane Philpott gave a good effort, but she lost her riding, and Jody Wilson-Raybould won her riding, but she actually won it by more than I was expecting, so she had a strong result. So she will sit as an independent. On the whole, there's not really a scenario where she will play, you know, queenmaker or kingmaker, but her being in Parliament is going to be yet another reminder of Justin Trudeau's SNC scandal and all the related affairs there. 
So not only is it good to see, you know, her win her seat, given how the Liberal Party treated her, but just from a drama perspective, from a theater perspective, from a grab your popcorn perspective, it's great to have Jody Wilson Raybould in Parliament. So those were my predictions and how they matched up. Tell me how I did, guys. I thought I did pretty decently. I maybe overestimated the NDP support. I'm a little disappointed by that result. I still think Jagmeet uh, is the leader for the NDP, and I'll be putting on another video later today, probably, where I go over that. But on the whole, I thought my predictions were pretty good. Here's what this means, though. The Liberals are in a really interesting position. They have a minority government, and that's undeniably a, a, a demotion from where they were. They lost their absolute majority, and now they have a minority. But it's a minority where the other parties sort of have to all work together to defeat them. It's not a minority where they're only beating the conservatives by 5 or 10 or even 15 seats. The gap is really, really big. So it's a stable-ish minority. And we don't know what's happening with Andrew Scheer. If Andrew Scheer is going to be forced out or resigns, then that'll give them even a few more months where there's not really going to be a challenge because the conservatives will be busy finding their next leader. And there's also the case that the Liberals won this election with the least amount of support that any federal government has ever. This government has very, very little support. It basically has the support of one third of Canadians. And because the Liberals were very lucky with their vote distribution, they get a healthy minority, but it's still not really that representative of the Canadian population. It's really not at all. And so the Liberals need to realize that whether or not they can effectively govern as a quasi-majority, the political reality is that they need to cooperate with other parties. They need to work, especially with the NDP, to pass progressive reforms. One, it's the right thing to do because a party with 33% support really shouldn't be going around acting like it won a decisive mandate. And two, those NDP policies are some of the ones that liberal members support and are ones that Canadians need. And I think that Justin Trudeau could win a lot of credibility back if he works with the NDP on those issues because the liberals need to realize that if they want to get back to majority territory, they need to win back progressives. They need to find some areas of growth again. They need to find a way back into Quebec, you know, to take seats away from the bloc. That's what they need to do if they want a majority again. And it's not going to happen if Justin Trudeau continues to act like a center-right prime minister. But there's a chance that if he goes to the NDP and works with them on pharmacare and dental care and child care on those issues and maybe other ones like electoral reform and others, that he could really strengthen his position and gain back a lot of credibility. People gave Trudeau another go as prime minister, but he's still unpopular. Canadians don't really like him anymore. Canadians don't really trust him anymore. This was really a, we like you more than we like Sheer, or more accurately, we hate you less than we hate Sheer, so we're going to give you another go. But this is not a, a stunning mandate for Trudeau. This is not the Canadian population falling in love with him as they did four years ago. This is a, we are going to tolerate you for the time being sort of mandate. Trudeau needs to realize the difference and govern accordingly. And so for Jagmeet Singh, this is a great opportunity. I think he needs to stay on as NDP leader. That's my view 100%. Jagmeet Singh needs to push for those policies that he knows Canadians will support. And he knows that the Liberals will feel pressure if they don't implement, even from within their own party. He needs to fight for progressive policies that Liberal members and Liberal MPs and Liberal you know, voters across the country can support, as well as the broad progressive population. And that will put pressure on Justin Trudeau. Justin Trudeau knows that especially if the Conservatives go into a leadership race, there's not going to be a snap election for the first year of this mandate. It doesn't look very likely given the strong position the Liberals have relative to the other parties. But if he fails to implement progressive promises and he lets Jagmeet Singh continue to hammer on how he is the progressive alternative and Jagmeet Singh's popularity continues to grow, then the strategic voting, you know, fear-mongering that seemed to work in this election will not work again, or it will not be as effective. And so Singh has a fantastic opportunity to put the pressure on, to go directly to Canadians and say, look, Justin Trudeau does not have a mandate to govern alone. We are willing to cooperate with him to build a pharmacare system, to build a dental care system, 
to build a child care system, to fight against student loan interest. And if Justin Trudeau is willing to work with us, we can make some beautiful things happen. And I think that can speak to Canadians. Jagmeet Singh has that sort of voice that can simultaneously attack his opponent when is needed, but also inspire a lot of hope and optimism. And I think that's the sort of voice that's needed in this parliament. And only he can provide it at this stage, given the balance of power in this parliament. So guys, that's where we're at. This election sort of ended similarly to what I was predicting and what many were predicting, but the Liberals' vote distribution gives them a lot more stability than maybe we were projecting on election night before the votes were counted. Justin Trudeau will remain prime minister. Uh, Andrew Scheer, I feel, is going to be on his way out as conservative leader. Jagmeet Singh will remain the NDP leader and will do so from a position of growing strength within and beyond the party. The bloc leader, of course, Blanchette, is riding a high, and I think he is going to be well stabilized within his position. Maxime Bernier's People's Party may well end up dead. We don't know what's going to happen there. And Elizabeth May, whether or not the Green Sea last night is a success or not, is up for debate. I, ha I have to talk to more Greens to figure that out. But I do feel that this was Elizabeth May's last election as Green Leader. Not so much that she'll be forced out, but that I think she wants uh, to enter a new chapter of her life. So it'll be interesting to see who the Green Party will find to replace her. Whether it's one of their existing MPs, or whether it's somebody totally new. So guys, it was a great election in terms of, of entertainment. I'm a little disappointed with the results as a new Democrat, but I'm 100% optimistic that Jagmeet Singh did the best he could. I'll come out with a video later about that. Have a great one. I'll see you next time. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments.